Well, this is the uh, engine bay of our 1967 Pontiac GTO. Red with a white interior in it. Really has a lot of look to it, a lot of pop to it. Um, this particular car has been modified a little bit, not drastically. Uh, it has a mild cam in it. Uh, it does have an Edelbrock intake manifold on it, aluminum. And instead of a uh, four barrel on it or a tri power, a lot of guys do put tri powers on these 400s. This guy has two AFBs on it and two um, Edelbrock uh, carburetors on it. I'm, I'm going to assume they're probably 500 CFMs a piece. Uh, it does have a uh, dual line going to them, braided stainless line going to the pump. It has power steering, it has power brakes on it. It does have also a set of long tube hooker headers on it. Uh, this car is making a lot of snot to it. I mean, it, it makes some serious horsepower. I drove the car uh, and it runs and drives and shifts and does everything like it should as a 1967 Pontiac GTO, only better. Definitely make it more horsepower than a standard uh, Pontiac 400 that came in these guys. Uh, it is a 242 car, by the way, and it is a real GTO. This is not a clone or a, a, a tribute car. It is a real GTO to start life, and it still presents itself as that today. It has a, a four-pass aluminum radiator in it, a new alternator on it, a um, flex fan. It's fixed. It is not a clutch fan, it's a, but it is a flex fan. Um, it does have the heat still hooked up to the uh, passenger compartment. The inner fender panels are painted uh, semi-flat black, just the way they would have been for Pontiac, as is the header panel, which is totally undisrupted. This car's never been hit in the nose or anything. It looks like it has a lot of originality to it yet. Underhood area painted uh, flat black. Uh, it's a nice looking car. The engine compartment doesn't have any leaks whatsoever. None detectable up here anyway. I know that uh, uh, Roger just put a new set of uh, exhaust gaskets on it uh, for the headers. Uh, this one on this side was starting to leak a little tiny bit, you could hear it, so he put a new set of copper uh, uh, gaskets on it. It um, has no leaks whatsoever on the correct valve pan covers that uh, came on this vehicle or on the front of the engine. And the water pump has uh, been replaced on it recently, you can see that. Uh, it has new belts on it. Donnie always makes sure he puts new belts on everything. He has a belt fetish. Everything has to have new belts on it. Um, I don't see any leaks at all on it anywhere, at least not on top here. We'll get a better look once we get underneath it. Again, the hit, uh, hooker headers are nice and clean, and they do have new gaskets on them. Uh, the cowl tag is nice and clear and, and, and legible. Uh, dual stage master cylinder, and it's also been replaced. You can see it's relatively new. Uh, Donnie put a new battery in it also. Uh, this car had been sitting for quite some time and the battery was a little bit questionable, so Don put a new uh, uh, high amp uh, battery in it. So we have a great engine compartment. Uh, these cars were making, I believe these, the, the optional motor was making around 360 horsepower in these in 1967. Uh, of course with this dual quad set up and this intake manifold, it's certainly going to up the horsepower some and those headers don't hurt it any, so it's going to up it a little bit more. So if they were 360, you can bet that you're up into the four somewhere easily with what you have uh, in, in this engine compartment at this point. It, uh, again, steering and brakes, no air, but a uh, heck of a running vehicle. So we'll go around the rest of it and show you what we can there. If you're at Hankster's in Daytona Beach, Florida, and uh, we're going to present to you today a 1967 Pontiac GTO that everybody's going to be able to afford to buy. You're going to be very surprised at what you can buy this car for. Uh, it is a 242 GTO. It started life as a real GTO. Uh, it still has a 400 GTO engine in it. it, it it's a nice straight car. Uh, fit, the finish on it is better than driver quality. You can see that the hood fits up to the cowl area, to the front fender, just as nice as you'd ever hope it to. Pontiac arrow in the front, there's no patina whatsoever on it. No one's opened up the hood scoop through the years. And you can see on this side the the gap is the same. It's about an eighth of an inch the whole way around this hood and across the uh, cowl area that you see in the front there, the, in front of the windshield. Uh, also in front of the uh, car you can see that the fitment of the hood to this front panel is just as nice as you'd ever hope for it to be. No patina whatsoever. Let me check, make sure. And yeah, a little tiny bit here on the uh, chrome basils around the headlight on this side. Let's check this side. I can't find any on this side. A little tiny bit. It might have been, you know what? It's just the way it was cast and the way it was uh, plated. That's not deterioration. These are new, so 
Um, that's just the way it, it was from the factory. Uh, nice um, parking lights in the front, nice clear lenses on them. Of course, we've got our GTO designation in white and also the uh, metal grating uh, a cheese grater grill in it. Uh, nice flat black uh, surround on it. Bumper fitment in the front. A little tiny bit out on that side. This either has to come out or that has to go in. Well, and we're really talking about uh, not even a quarter of an inch. We'll say a quarter of an inch. So it's well within production standards. Probably the way it came from Pontiac in 1967. Chrome on the front bumper is very nice. Really don't feel anything. No dents marks whatsoever on it. A little GURP Pontiac plate on the front of it. Um, and there's no dents or dinkies whatsoever on it. Uh, Height-wise, the bumper fitment is about as nice as you could hope to find. Nope, I'm going to stand corrected again. That has to come up just a little tiny bit. We got a quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch up, and then we have a precise fitment on it. Uh, that's the only adjustment that we can see to make at this point, because the hood usually is an issue, and this thing fits as precise as you could ever hope it to. Um, nice front end on the car, nice paint on the car. It's, it's much better than the driver quality paint job. It's a bright red Pontiac GTO, and we're going to go down the side and see what it looks like there. Okay, starting at the nose of our 67 GTO. Uh, stainless steel, the whole length of these in 1967, they put it uh, on the bottoms of the doors, the whole uh, base of the vehicle. Um, wheel lip molding, no dinghies, no marks whatsoever. All nice tin. Again, look at the fitment of this. There's a header panel here, near your cowl area. Uh, to the hood, to the front fender, to the uh, windshield A pillar, just as nice and straight as you could ever hope to find. Door fitment in the front, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. And again, this is all stainless along the bottom. Pontiac designation on the base of the uh, front fender, just the way it should be. A, um, let's see, correct wiper arms and blades on this guy, too. Huh, that's nice. Trim around the front window, no marks, no dinghies whatsoever. Uh, dash pad, nice, clean on top, no warpage whatsoever, and no cracks on it either. The uh, base of the windshield, where it goes onto the dashboard, just as nice and straight and clean as you'd ever hope to find. That's padded there. This is metal here that goes the entire length of it. So um, it's just nice and clean, nice and clear. This is usually all really rough with patina. This one has a little tiny bit, and I mean a very, very little bit of... Uh, a pitting in a chrome, but hardly objectionable. Certainly nothing that you would ever go back and address. The roof is like a sheet of glass. There's no uh, uh, indentures in it. There's no scratches, marks, dinghies, nothing whatsoever. Uh, drip rail, no marks or anything on it either. Window fitment, look at this. The front window to the quarter glass, just as nice a fit as you would ever hope to find. And this is new seals on this also. Uh, white whiskers, nice and fresh on both the door and the quarter panel. Door handles, I can't tell if they're new or if they're replaced, but at any rate, there's no issues whatsoever with them. The side marker, or side uh, mirror, a um, eh, little tiny bit of patina on the front of it originality, but again, it's something that you can hardly notice and you're not going to replace it. No dents or marks or chips in the door anywhere. Door fitment to the quarter, look at that. That's as nice as you're going to find. Uh, a trim that goes across the top of the door and a quarter panel. Usually these things are kind of dingied up a little bit. This one has no marks or indentures whatsoever in it. And it's still nice and bright as can be. Sail panel on the uh, roof. There's absolutely no uh, issues with it whatsoever. Trim around the back window. No dense dinghies whatsoever in it. Hat, rack, shelf, tray, whatever you want to call it. Um, the uh, speaker perforations are just as nice and clean as they were when they were new. I believe it is the original one also. A little tiny bit of fade to it. They're usually like a black charcoal color and this one's uh, more of a charcoal than it is black right now. So it does have a little bit of fade, but certainly nothing that you'd ever go back and replace or, or do anything with. Little lip. Nice and sharp.
sharp edges on it. Um, quarter panel, again, as nice as you could find. And you can see the stainless along the bottom of the uh, entire length of this car is just as straight and nice as you could ever hope for GTO designation on the back here. Uh, really straight, nice side to this car. Paint's nice. I didn't find any chips or dinghies in it whatsoever. It's a nice straight side on it. Uh, wheel lips all have uh, integrity to them. There's no dents or marks in them. It does have a set of chrome aftermarket wheels on it. Um, I wish I had a set of uh, Rally 1s or Rally 2s. Well, Rally 2s, actually. Uh, but this is the way we got the car. It does have these chrome wheels on it. Uh, you, does have red line tires on it, which give it a nice accent with the red finish on the vehicle. Uh, the wheels actually do make it uh, look a little flashier than the uh, standard uh, silver painted Pontiac uh, Rally 2s would. Uh, they're a nice set, of, uh, nice set of wheels and a new set of radial type tires on them. They're not yeah, these, are, these are radials. They're red line radials. So the side of this car and the front are just about as nice as you can find. A little bit of tweak on that front bumper is the only thing I can find so far. Let's go out back see if we can show you there. Okay, this is the uh, rear section of our 67 Pontiac GTO. Again, you can see the gap on the uh, trunk, eighth of an inch the whole way around, GTO designation. And the uh, paint, again, better than driver quality. It's a very, very nice, nice paint job on it. It has a lot of luster to it, a lot of depth to it. Just a nice looking uh, paint job. Here's an issue here, and I don't know if we can straighten this out or not. We'll give it a try, but uh, for some reason, this piece of trim does not match up with this piece of trim, but yet the deck lid and the quarter panel match okay. So I don't know how we can somehow, I don't know, this has to be brought out and down a little bit somehow. I don't know how they did that, but they did it on both sides. It's just not fit on properly. Uh, we're going to have to take a look and see what we can do with that. Uh, tr the trim around the uh, taillights. 67 only. The lenses themselves are nice and clear. They have a nice clear uh, uh, finish to them. The um, uh, trim around them, which is usually deteriorated some, is nice and straight and clean on that one. Check this one. Same way on this one. There's no deterioration whatsoever. Absolutely none. A bumper fitment in the back. Very nice on the back. No. No marks, no dinghies whatsoever on it. Um, backup lights, lenses, nice and clean and clear. Turn downs on the exhaust, they're uh, slash cut and they're uh, polished stainless. Uh, real nice uh, uh, add to the uh, rear of this vehicle. Uh, the bumper has absolutely no dents or, or deviations in it. And again, a nice fitment to it and no scuffs or anything on the chrome. So the back end of this car is really, really a nice uh, presentation of the 67 GTO. Let's do one more side and then we quit. Okay, passenger side, 67 GTO. Again, no patina around the GTO uh, designation. Just as nice and clean as you'd hope to find. Sharp edges on the uh, quarter and in the wheel well. Um, paint on this thing is just really nice. It's uh, absolutely better than a Driver quality paint job, trim around the uh, rear light is just as nice and fresh as you'd hope to find, you know. There's no uh, dents or deviations whatsoever in the trim. Um, no marks on the sail panel, uh, no marks on the roof. Drip rail, no dents, nothing's falling through it or against it through the uh, years. Just as nice as you can find. Wipes whiskers, same as it was on the other side. Again, look at the window fitment on this thing. Front glass to the quarter glass. It's absolutely precise fitment. All the rubbers on this too are new. We put new rubbers on it the whole way around. Door handle just as fresh and nice as you'd hope to find. And again, I can't tell you if they're replaced or they're original, but they're in very good condition. Door fitment, look at that. Really nice fitment. Uh, top panels. Uh, trim pieces are just as straight as can be, no adventures whatsoever on it. Let's check this guy. This one's near perfect. A little tiny bit of patina down here, but you really got to look to see it. Pontiac uh, logo in the uh, wing area. 
from uh, this side of the window just as it was on the other side to get the base of the windshield to the dash is just as clean and clear as you ever know to find. Look at this. Look at this. GTO designation on the front, correct style antenna on it. Wheel with molding. No dents, no dinkies, no marks. Back where we started again. Uh, obviously, it's a red GTO, 242 code. It, it is a real GTO, uh, 400 Pontiac engine in it that's been slightly modified. It's not wildly cammed or anything. It's something that you, you can drive on a daily basis. It has steering and brakes. Um, it has two four barrels on it and a set of long tube hooker headers on it that's going to give it a substantial boost in horsepower and performance. It does have a set of aftermarket wheels on it. I wish we had the uh, uh, original wheels that came with the car, but we don't. And those wheels are brand spanking new. Uh, a set of fresh, all four of them, radial red line tires. You can see the uh, stainless, which is usually marked up and dinged up along both sides of the car. On this car, it's just as straight as you'd hope to find. Uh, the door fitment, everything is nice. The only fitment problem we found was a bumper. Uh, driver's side front needs to be tweaked in and up about a quarter of an inch and something maybe with that trim in the back, if we can. If we can't, that's the way you're going to get the car. But uh, at any rate, this car is going to be very normally priced. It, uh, it's a car that uh, uh, we traded and, uh, and uh, uh, we're able to go ahead and offer it as a kind of a special deal at Hangsters. So if you take a look at this thing, you're going to buy it substantially less than what you think you can buy a 67 Pontiac GTO for. It's a great color combination. I drove the car. It absolutely rips. There's no shake, shimmies, rattles, squeaks, nothing. The car performs as you would expect it to. Uh, it's just it's a, it's a fantastic looking color combination. I hate the wheels personally, but somebody else may look at them and love them. So uh, take a look at it. It's at Hangsters in Daytona Peach. And if you can run down, take a look at it, or fly in, take a look at it, we'd prefer that. But if you can't, that's why you're looking at this video, and you're going to see Devin's 100 photos up that you can look at every aspect of this car and know exactly what you're going to purchase here at Hangsters. We're not trying to hide anything from you. We're trying to present everything to you so that you have all the criteria that you need to make a decision on a purchase at Hangsters. 67 GTO. Okay, this is the interior of our uh, bright red 1967 Pontiac GTO. Uh, headliner, just as nice and fresh and taunt as you'd hope to find. Um, interior dome light uh, working just as it should. It has a, a wooden steering wheel in it, the tri-spokes, Pontiac uh, designation in the center of it. Uh, dashboard, we saw it from the outside, but the inside looks even better. There's no marks or cracks or, or chips or deviations or warpage whatsoever on it. It has an aftermarket style Pontiac radio in it, uh, but it does fit the enclosure. No one's hacked any uh, section of the dash to go ahead and put that in. The wood on the dash itself is nice. Nice and straight, and it's not peeling up in the corners where most of them begin to peel. This is on very nice, nice uh, fitment. Uh, it has a uh, speedometer and a clock. It does not have the uh, gauge package, but it, what it does have is a set of auxiliary gauges down here, water temperature and oil pressure. It has both of them, uh, nice uh, black faces with uh, white letters to go ahead and uh, coincide with what Pontiac put in the dashboard. Uh, all your knobs and everything are nice and clean and, uh, and fresh looking. The dashboard itself is really nice looking. Uh, how about this? You've got your Pontiac uh, manual in the center there in the console. Also, there's a console in the center of this guy too with the light that comes on. How about that? Um, his and hers shifter in this car. It does have a his and hers Pontiac shifter. Uh, automatic, of course. Uh, Three-speed automatic. The uh, interior of this car is really nice. I mean, it, the, the door panels front and rear are just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, armrests in the back, are, are uh, the chrome on them is really nice. Trash trays in the back, trash tray up front. Um, let's see. The seats, front and back, uh, are just as nice as you'd hope to ever find an interior on a car. It's just really, really a nice... Uh, uh, nice interior in this vehicle. The, it's, it's called parchment. It's not white. It's kind of a metallic looking white, like a cream white, and it, it really has a nice look to it. It's called parchment. Um, black uh, loop type carpeting in it. Pontiac uh, 
with the insignia and designation uh, original equipment floor mats on it, rubber floor mats. Uh, it does have a complement of seat belts, front and rear. You got seat belts in the back, and you got a pair of seat belts up front here also. The um, sun visors are nice and uh, no stitching coming loose, still nice and resilient. The fit's nice. Uh, no milkiness whatsoever in the uh, day night mirror that comes with the vehicle, also. Um, let's see here, wooden steering wheel. Again, it's an aftermarket wheel, but there's no cracks or anything in the uh, wood itself. It does have an auxiliary tachometer also. I think I forgot to mention that. Uh, it has the uh, molded style armrests uh, on it. They're not covered up with just vinyl. They are the uh, correct molded style armrests with the correct style, nice chrome um, mounting brackets for them. Uh, the door actuators are nice and clean. The chrome on them is just as fresh as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, chrome on the console, a lot of this stuff is you know, deteriorated through the years and the wood on it is still very, very nice. It's not beginning to come loose anywhere. And the chrome is also exemplary on this console. It's hard to get them with this type of a, a chrome finish with it anymore. Uh, every one of them you find have a deteriorated uh, uh, chrome console on it. Uh, inside the doors is nice and clean and clear. All the rubbers on this vehicle I know are brand new because we put them on. The other ones were starting to get a little bit aged and uh, we just replaced all the weather stripping on this entire vehicle. So it's a nice car. It, uh, it, it runs well, drives well. It's got a gorgeous interior in it. There's no sag whatsoever to the seating. Um, there's no real, I, I can't pick out anything in this vehicle that's a negative. It, uh, it's a nice running car. It's going to be very nominally priced. And uh, take a look at it. It'll be on your Hangster's website, Daytona site. Try to get this done as soon as I can. I think it's about 150 out here right now. I'm not sure, but I, I know it's got to be approaching 150 degrees out here with the sunlight. Um, 67 Pontiac GTO. Uh, tachometer works as it should. You can see it is functioning. Working just as it should. Um, horn. Horn works as it should. Uh, let's see what we got here. The, um, Oil pressure's uh, holding about uh, about 58 pounds of oil pressure. Temperature just starting to come up right now. Uh, we just turned the car on, so it's just starting to move right now. Speedometer will show you shortly. Let's see if the radio works. Radio worked, Dev? Yep, radio works. 81 in Ocala and 87 in Orlando. Okay, radio does work. Uh, wipers, let's try wipers. Wipers work. Okay, uh, turn signals. <clears throat> turn signal left. Oh, wait, wait, turn signal left, blinking away. Turn signal right, blinking away the way it should. Uh, so both of the turn signals are functioning as they should. Uh, and we're going to go for a ride, see what it runs like. Nice tight car. Um, let's see if I can set the steering wheel here. There's no road straight as an arrow, no hands on the steering wheel. Just set as nice as it can possibly be. Still no hands on the wheel, we're still going straight. It's a nice straight running car. Let's try uh, brakes no hands, see what happens. Uh, wait a minute, try it again. Yep, it stops as nice as you want to. steering and there's no play in it whatsoever, absolutely precise. No, no shakes, rattles, shimmy, squeaks, nothing. Absolutely nothing. The speedometer is working and functioning as it should also. I don't know if you see it or not, but it, it's working just the way it should. It doesn't, uh, 
it, it doesn't hammer it into gear, but it, it gives you a nice firm shift, real nice positive. Nice car. It's got a nice sound to it, not objectionably loud, but it has a nice rumble. Uh, it says Flowmaster Offers on it. Uh, it's just a nice tight, nice sharp looking car. Very precise. Nice. Can't really say there's anything wrong with the car. Anything you can point in the direction and drive down the road with no hands, how bad can it be? Nice, solid, solid, solid car. Okay, this is the uh, underside of our 1967 red Pontiac GTO. Uh, really neat car, really nice running car. Uh, new fuel pump on it, I can see that from here. Someone's put a uh, chrome oil pan on it, which does not have any leaks. There's no leaks at all other than at the engine at this time. Um, let's see. New shocks in the front, looks like the original springs. The uh, bell housing area has no drippage whatsoever, no seepage at all. Set of long tube headers on this guy. I'm going to call these maybe inch and uh, five eighths, inch and three quarters, uh, maybe inch and three quarter primary tube headers, long tube headers going into three inch collectors that go into a three inch primary pipe going back to the Flowmaster muffler. This thing has a serious exhaust system on it. Uh, deeper turbo uh, 400 oil pan on it, uh, the way Pontiac we have in 1967. Uh, but this one's a deeper one, and it does have a provision that you can change the oil in it without dropping the pan. So I mean, it does have a nice uh, feature uh, with that. The floor pans themselves are really nice. Uh, a little bit of uh, undercoating, non vendor material that was splattered on these guys when they were new yet, and it's still intact. The frame in the front. Uh, the box channel section of the frame before it goes on to the uh, C channel section on the sides. Uh, nice and clean fender lips, the uh, fender wells, inner fender wells where they come down and join the um, subframes in the front. Nice as could be, they're not all kinked up or anything from someone jacking them up through the years. Uh, let's see. Uh, cooling lines going forward to the uh, uh, radiator, uh, metal cooling lines, uh, new linkage for the uh, turbo 400 transmission. Uh, no leaks whatsoever on the transmission itself or the tail shaft area either. Uh, U-joints aren't new in the front, but uh, they're, they're also, uh, they look like they're relatively uh, in good shape. Again, the three inch primary pipes go back and there is a crossover pipe, a transitional pipe. I'm gonna call it uh, two and a quarter. I'm gonna call it two and a quarter inch. A crossover pipe, H pipe. Only Chrysler did there is uh, parking brakes still hooked up and functional. Uh, fuel lines uh, uh, still the it looks like now the fuel lines been replaced. The brake lines are the original brake lines still on the vehicle though. A um, couple little marks where jack stands or jacks have been used through the years. A little tiny bit of an indenture there. You can see where they were placed. The structural pieces on the uh, floor pans themselves. <clears throat> just as nice and uh, uh, undented and unmolested as you can hope to find. Uh, thankfully, nobody jacked it up on those through the years. It doesn't appear that the poor, poor pants were ever uh, disrupted in any way. Uh, they appear to be original. Like I said, in the front there, everything appears to be original on, on the undercarriage of this vehicle. The C-channel sections go back into a box-channel frame section in the back again at this point. And again, there's no jack marks whatsoever on that. Uh, the bushings look like they're a little bit newer or fairly new in the front part of the swing arm assemblies. 10 bolt heavy duty rear end that uh, Pontiac used in these uh, GTOs. Uh, it has drum brakes in the front, which I neglected to mention. It has drum brakes in the front and it has drum brakes in the back. Fin drums and they are a uh, heavy duty uh, brake system that Pontiac supplied with these vehicles. Flowmaster mufflers. 3 inch in and 3 inch out. This thing has a serious exhaust system on it. Uh, about as nice as you could ever hope to find. Has a set of uh, gas, really gas heavy, really, damn, gas heavy duty shocks in the uh, back of this vehicle. They're relatively new. They still have uh, the white paint on them. Um, real super heavy set of uh, shocks. I haven't seen a set that heavy for a long time. Wow. Uh, okay, I'm getting off track here. The uh, floor pans in the trunk, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find, again, with the original factory uh, undercoating that was put on uh, by Pontiac. The subframes in the back, 
transition up over the uh, uh, differential and they're just totally uh, totally undisrupted. They're as nice as you would ever hope to find. The um, C-channel part in the back, there's a section that joins them and the back section be in front of the rear bumper. Uh, there's no pulls or dents or anything whatsoever that I can see on it. Original gas tank also, and it's uh, dent free. I don't see a single mark on it anywhere. Uh, the uh, uh, drop downs in the quarter panels, everything appears to be original on this car yet. I can't believe it, but I mean, it, it, it looks as though the uh, uh, floor pans in the back and the drop downs, and from what I can see on the quarters, uh, show originality. Uh, it's just a really nice, solid, straight car underneath. Uh, it's not a rotisserie restoration, but it's also a, uh, uh, a, a rust-free uh, 1967 Pontiac uh, GTO. It's a real 242 car. It is a real GTO. It's not a clone. It, uh, it's just a really straight-looking uh, car. It runs well, drives well. Uh, it's a car that's here at Hangsters. Uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, and if you're in the market for a GTO, this is going to be priced very nominally, so this is a car that maybe you want to take a look at. It, it's, a, it's a serious uh, a contender for uh, somebody that's uh, in the market for a Pontiac GTO, especially 67.